This is a video on the classes of antibiotics that target bacterial nucleic acids. We're going to be talking about antibiotics that target nucleic acids themselves, how they're used, or molecules leading up to the synthesis of nucleic acids. So before we begin, I want to give a brief overview of this pathway that makes tetrahydrofolic acid, or tetrahydrofolate. Tetrahydrofolate is integral in making nucleic acids. So if we don't have THF, tetrahydrofolate, we won't be able to make nucleic acids. The first two antibiotic classes that we're going to talk about inhibit the pathway that make tetrahydrofolate. And the first one is sulfonamides. Now sulfonamides are a class of antibiotics that are bacteriostatic when used alone or bactericidal when used with this other class of antibiotics that we'll get into in a bit. One example of sulfonamides is sulfamethoxazole, abbreviated SMX. Um, SMX and TMP are the abbreviations for uh, that this, this specific sulfonamide and this specific trimethoprim. Now, sulfon or sulfonamides, uh, they inhibit the DHPS protein, which is this protein up here. And, of course, if we cannot make tetrahydrofolate, we cannot synthesize nucleic acids. So this is kind of a, a, a way to stop the production of nucleic acids very, very high up in the pathway. There are a few ways to get resistance to sulfonamides. The first way is to mutate the gene that makes this enzyme. <clears throat> if there's a mutation in this gene, the enzyme might change enough such that the sulfonamides cannot affect it. Further, we can acquire another DHPS protein. Um, this can be done through horizontal transfer of genes from one bacteria to the other. Perhaps there's a DHPS that, that alters the binding site so that sulfonamides cannot, cannot get there. And one last way to, to provide resistance to sulfonamides is increased PABA production. So if you overload this pathway with this molecule here, the PABA, then even though sulfonamides are blocking some of this enzyme, you're still going to get enough through to have normal nucleic acid synthesis. Second group, as we mentioned a second ago, are trimethoprim. Uh, trimethoprim is abbreviated TMP, like we said a second ago. It's bactericidal, and when it's used together with sulfonamides, the effects are synergistic. This means that both of the drugs can be used at a lower concentration than what you would normally have to use if you use them individually. So these two, in the same pathway, are synergistic together. Trimethoprim inhibits the DHFR, this is dihydrofolate reductase, the enzyme that makes dihydrofolate itself. All right, these are different antibiotics now, different classes that are not related to the dihydrofolate pathway. The first that we want to talk about is quinolones or fluoroquinolones. These are some examples of the first generation quinolone, it's called nalidixic acid, and then one of the newer ones is ciprofloxacin, which is a second generation fluoroquinolone. Quinolones are bactericidal, and they work by inhibiting DNA gyrase and tapioisomerase. Um, so these are, these are both enzymes that are very crucial to reproduction, to, to copying DNA, and uh, if you stop them, then you prevent cells from growing. There are also a few ways to get resistance to quinolones. The first way is to have a mutation in the target proteins. If you mutate DNA gyrase or topoisomerase, then these antibiotics might not be able to bind to them and, and do their inhibitory effect. Secondly, you can decrease the uptake of these antibiotics. If you decrease the amount of antibiotic that gets into the cell, they might be less effective. Similarly, if you increase the amount of antibiotic that's pumped out of the cell, if you increase the efflux, you get a similar effect. And there are a few other resistance mechanisms that, that kind of relate to resistance mechanisms from other antibiotics. This is kind of an, an, an ambiguous thing right here, but I just wanted to note that there are other ways to confer resistance to quinolones. Next group of antibiotics is rifamycins, and one example of those is rifampin. Now, these can be either bacteriostatic or bactericidal, depending on the concentration, depending on the dosage administered. 
they work by binding to RNA polymerase, which of course makes mRNA from the DNA. This is the process of transcription. So these rifamycins are essentially preventing transcription. Now to get resistance to rifamycins, you want a mutation in RNA polymerase, which is the, obviously the enzyme that these rifamycins bind to. One of the last groups we want to talk about is nitroimidazoles. And one example of these are metronidazole. These are bactericidal and they're unique in that they work against anaerobic microbes. And uh, one last thing to note is that they damage DNA that is already made. They damage existing DNA in the cell. Uh, what's also interesting about nitroimidazoles is that they must be activated by enzymes within the bacteria. They are part of a class called prodrugs. It's, it's a group of molecules that, that are administered as prodrugs and they become active inside the actual bacteria when they're activated by microbial enzymes. So this has been a brief overview of antibiotics that target bacterial nucleic acids. Thanks for listening.